It was a good script and a uh, good director. I don't know, it's very hard to give uh, uh, solid answers. Um, talking to the director when we were making it, I said I just wanted to make sure that there was a dimension to this priest that made him very human and uh, open to all his own doubts and uh, lack of faith and his struggles with his own inherent atheism or disbelief. He goes through the dark night of the soul, which he describes about his loneliness and his uh, living in hell when he loses faith totally in God. But it comes back and he's cast back into the light again from the darkness, ex umbris ad lucem. And uh, those, those are the parts that I really enjoyed, is uh, expressing uh, the man's unease with himself, with his own doubts. And then he's challenged by the young priest who doubts totally, does, rejects his ideas of a diabolical presence. And I said, well, okay, I respect that, but be careful. And I like that, Mom, just be careful. This is my favorite line in the movies, is that, you know, by not believing him, by not believing in him, won't protect you from him. And I noticed, uh, I saw the little audience the other day, and people, oh, it's, it's a little scary. But uh, I, I, I think people like to be, they don't like to be scared, but we, you, know, you said you would find it scary and it makes you uneasy. I think we all like to, every human being likes to flirt with that idea of their own inner chaos and uh, um, catastrophe, because the final catastrophe is life is, um, it's not a catastrophe, but it's our mortality, our finite existence. So we take a little sidelong glance of it and we go to the movies to watch films like this or Rosemary's Baby or The Exorcist or The Shining or Silence of the Lambs, whatever it is, because we give ourselves a little shock that we know we can come out in the sunlight on Westwood Boulevard and have our popcorn or whatever, or go for a coffee afterwards and have a discussion. But it's um, a bit of a thrill. It's like reading Edgar Allan Poe, if you re or reading The House of Usher or reading anything that's dark. I just know how to do it. I don't know why I do it. I don't know how to do it. It's just a look. I know what I know it's scary. I'm playing this part when, when the young man comes into the room <clears throat> is um you know, you don't have to do much. The lines when he comes in the room is his father looks and says, Oh, he's not here at the moment. He's out. You know, it's good. Oh, we did it with a nut. Uh, so it's very easy and said, No, he's out at the moment. Told you he's not here. Close the door, please. We don't want to be disturbed, do we? Boom, door closes on its own. That's enough to scare the hell out of people. So I don't have to act, you know, I say, sit down, please. Hello, Clarice, all that stuff. And I think they put that special effect on. I was kind of surprised that they put so much on at the end. But no, I didn't have any makeup. It was just there's some, you know, computer stuff they do after the film. I did all the voices myself, though, all that was my stuff. It was the most beautiful city I've been in for a long time. Uh, I look back on it with great nostalgia. We arrived there on May the 22nd, I remember, Saturday night. We drove from um, Venice, we from Rome, spent one night in Venice, and then drove across Slovenia into Budapest by 8 o'clock at night, and it was raining, and it was beautiful. And, uh, and next, on the, that was a Saturday, and on the Sunday morning, I woke up, and I walked over the bridge to Buda, beautiful Heaven. city. Ah. And just outside the hotel, I was staying at the Four Seasons, there's a, a street that goes up to St. Michael's, I think, I think it's St. Stephen's Cathedral. Or is it St. Michael's? St. Stephen's, I think. This beautiful cathedral, which was not that old. It was probably 19th century. Um, and I went into the churches where Elizabeth of Austria was crowned, uh, fascinating, fascinating country, and, and fortunately, uh, it's been preserved. I mean, the Hungarians, um, are resilient, tough people, they suffered under Nazism and they survived that in the tough communist regime um, where they didn't have any, you know, people were very close down, they were censored and there was no sense of freedom there, but they muddled along, you know, and I think once the 
uh, collapse of Eastern, the Iron Curtain country after Gorbachev and uh, taking down the wall of Berlin. I think people could breathe a sigh of relief, but they were still a little nervous. You know, they, it's very closely seared in their memories that it wasn't the best life to live. But uh, fortunately, uh, nothing was destroyed. The architecture of the places, and Buddha, and um, it's interesting over Buddha, you still see the machine gun holes in the walls with the uprisings and uh, the, you know, the partisans fighting against the Germans, and really interesting. Well, I was intrigued and uh, interested. I, I've never delved into it, into exorcism, but uh, um, I'd never played, I don't think I've ever played a priest before, but uh, when I was talking to Michael Hofstrom, I said I'd like to uh, give him another dimension of a man who is himself going through grave doubts and crisis in his life. Uh, there's a scene in the film where I, um, they cut it out actually, it wasn't because it was unnecessary for the film, but there's a scene, a little bit of information where I say to the young priest at the beginning of the film, I said, my, when my mother died, I was a young man, I was very angry at God, and I gave it up. I said, here I am in Rome, so, so much for, uh, he all dressed up for the carnival, which they've kept in, you know, the final exorcism scene. Um, the destiny brought me there. Um, I, 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 uh, so I, uh, there's a scene where I say, you know, I, uh, there are times when I really don't know whether I believe in God, Santa Claus or Tigger Bell, but I keep going and in the darkness I feel God's fingernails scratching around inside me until I'm cast out from the darkness back into the light, like some beside Luchim or something like that, I say, just to throw it away. Uh, and that's what I wanted to do, a man who would never preach at the young priest, you've got to believe. He said, well, if you don't believe, that's up to you, but I do believe, and uh, that's my life, you know, I don't preach anyone, anyway. I believe, I I believe what I believe, and um, I never get in people's way. If uh, an atheist wants to challenge me, I say, well, good, okay, you give me your best shot. I, I won't argue. What's the point of arguing? All I know is that I, I, I'm glad I have an open window in my soul. I don't want to be living in a closed grey room like Jean-Paul Sartre. We close and I exit. Um, great brighter than he was. Uh, but no, I'd rather live in doubt. I'd rather live with uncertainty, which we have no choice. Uh, nothing is certain. Everything is uncertain. No, I, I gave him a bad time. No, I'd say to him, I said, is this the way you're going to play the part? He said, no, it's not your career. No, he's a wonderful actor. I, yeah, I, and you know, this is his first movie. And also, um, he, um, his agent phoned him and said, I want you to do a film test. He said, I don't know. He lives in a little town outside of Dublin. And uh, he hadn't worked for some time. And uh, his friend from next door, I met him actually, he came out to Budapest to visit him. Uh, filmed him, and uh, a scene from the movie. Then I met him out here, they, Michael Hofstrom said, we've got this wonderful actor, would you like to? I said, yeah. He said, would you do a film test with him? Because they want to make sure at the studio that, he, I said, well, so we met at a Shutter's Hotel, they had a little video camera, or DVD camera, or you call it digital camera, and we did a little bit of a scene, and uh, he seemed pretty good to me. And then Michael for me, the director for me, he said, what do you think? I said, well, he's pretty good, isn't he? And they had, he still didn't know whether he'd got the part or not. I think the studio, for business reasons, were thinking about getting a kind of name actor for the part. And then some wisdom prevailed, and I think Michael Hofstrom and uh, um, the producers said, no, let's go for this unknown actor, because we don't want the information of somebody who's a star actor, you know. Um, so day he turns up on the first day, and I say, how are you feeling? He says, I feel very nervous. I say, oh, well, don't be. Just enjoy it. And I, I'm really impressed by him. He's such a nice guy as well. He's married, and he's, his mother and father came out to Budapest, and he's very much uh, an Irish boy, you know. Uh, lives in a small town in Ireland. And I think, I think they're having a showing of this in Dublin for some charity of his, or his brother's charity. But what, what I like about Colin is that he's a very modest guy, you know. I said, don't lose the modesty. Don't lose that. I like young actors, they're great to work with.